Alrighty, so I never thought I'll be back for these types of videos, but like, why not, right? So, heh. So, whatever y'all at, guys, I hope y'all staying safe and having a great summer so far. But I pray for y'all and hope y'all staying safe. But man, but I don't want this intro to be too long because on this video, I'll, there's gonna be another video for this. Actually, this video is gonna be kind of long, maybe. I don't know, but let's just see what happens. So, before I go ahead and talk about Dead Rising, the Lux Remastered, obviously it's kind of surprising. I never thought this probably happened. I was kind of, maybe, if they're going to come up with a remaster on this game, but before we talk about it, I got to say is that they're gonna, it's confirmed that there's going to be a new Resident Evil coming out very soon. So, we don't have too much info. All we know is that it's confirmed there's going to be a new Resident Evil. So if y'all want to know what Resident Evil it is, maybe it's 9, or maybe it's going to be a different one, a reboot maybe, we don't know. Or all we know is it's going to be a new Resident Evil. So that's kind of exciting, so got to get that out of the way, if you know what I mean. But coming out on Resident Evil Deluxe Remastered, uh, I don't know too much about this game, but I did play this game. I didn't play this game when this game came out. I did play this game around, I don't know. I think before I played Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, around there, but man, this game was amazing, it looks phenomenal, it's the graphics, it's just amazing. So this game is coming out September 19, hope y'all pre-ordered. What you just witnessed is the newly released trailer for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. You may be thinking, that looks like a full-on remake. We had the same thought, so we spoke with three key staff to get to the bottom of this Deluxe Remaster. We began our investigation with director Ryosuke Murai. Well, actually, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to call this game a remake, considering the work we put into it. Before we could even ask a question, Murai was giving us the inside scoop about the game. The first thing you'll notice is the improved graphics. The new specs allow the game to run at 4K 60fps. We've also made quite a few quality of life improvements, like the ability to move while aiming, as well as other adjustments to make controlling Frank more intuitive. Thanks to popular demand, we've added an autosave feature and fine-tuned the user interface. The game will be fully voiced in nine languages, with text in 14, giving more players around the world a chance to enjoy characters' dialogue. We've also made some improvements to NPC behavior that we hope will make surviving the zombie apocalypse with all the colorful characters that much more enjoyable. That sounds like a complete overhaul. It makes me wonder if the game's main concept is still intact. If you've played the original, rest assured that its core remains unchanged in this deluxe remaster. We did our best to respect the direction of the original game. We kept the fundamental gameplay the same while improving upon the user experience. With this, we believe that both veterans and newcomers alike will be able to enjoy a fresh experience. Our goal was to ensure that today's players would experience the same shock players felt when the original game was released. We believe we accomplished this goal with Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. We hope that everyone will give it a try. Unable to get any definitive answers out of director Murai, we gave art director Satoshi Takamatsu the third degree. It turns out he had ambitions of his own for this project. Because the original came out 18 years ago, there were many limitations during development. Thanks to nearly two decades of technological advancements, we were able to accomplish a lot that couldn't be done back then. For example, Resident Evil, Capcom's other zombie franchise, focused on quality over quantity. Dead Rising took a different approach. The goal was to pack as many zombies as possible into that huge shopping mall. This meant each individual zombie wasn't as polished as we would have liked. However, this time around, we were able to focus on quality as well. As the art director, I couldn't be more pleased that we were able to apply high-end modeling and production to both the main character, Frank, 
and all of the NPCs. Of course, another critical aspect of Dead Rising that we have to address is the shopping mall setting. In the original game, the Willamette Parkview Mall is made up of several areas, like Entrance Plaza and Paradise Plaza, each with its own unique characteristics. We've taken these designs and evolved them even further by adding real-time lighting and shadow effects so that each location takes on a different appearance depending on the time of day. That's how much detail we've put into this project. For character animations, we tried to limit unnecessary changes and use the original data as much as possible, especially during action scenes. We could have made them more realistic with today's tools, but we wanted to preserve the unique and comical movements that made the original Dead Rising so special. Takamatsu was finally giving us the info we were looking for. However, we couldn't stop there. We had to know why this is called a deluxe remaster. To do that, we tracked down the game's producer and managed to get his account. I think Dead Rising is a unique game with extremely tight game design, even by today's standards. However, we also knew the original game was released 18 years ago and that improvements were needed to reach a modern audience. That's why we focused on improving playability in addition to overhauling the graphics. This game truly deserves the title of Deluxe Remaster. Its unique game design allows it to stand apart from other zombie games. It feels fresh even today. Morimoto took a moment to compose himself before divulging something terrifying. Here at Capcom, we're no strangers to zombies. But this game takes it to another level. How did Kawano perceive the target audience for this game? We weren't sure whether to target a casual or core audience. However, we trusted management's concepts and made what we thought would be fun. Kawano had a range of experience directing Mega Man Legends and Breath of Fire, and he was confident in this new genre. We wanted to put the main character somewhere that was overrun with zombies. Most games might ordinarily make their main character a cop or a soldier. A badass, decked out in gear, ready for the situation. But we thought going in that direction would dilute the madness and unpredictability of the zombie outbreak. So, we made him a journalist. We focused the story on him being trapped in a place full of zombies, trying to escape and rescuing survivors along the way so that they can all make it out together. Kawano faced challenges during development. It's clear though that he still has the same passion for the game. In terms of the narrative, there's a zombie outbreak. We wanted the player to encounter people trying to escape and others who have become a bit unhinged, making them feel like they're trapped in the outbreak. On the development team, we all felt like it was a fun game, but others who saw the game were kind of taken aback. Some even asked whether it was okay to make a game that was so violent. For a second, we started to doubt ourselves. Such an innovative project was bound to grapple with internal friction. But Kawano had a trump card to play, fan expectations. We previewed it at a game show and got mobbed. Players loved that you could use a parasol to kill zombies or put buckets on their heads. That's when I knew we'd done it. I still can't say whether it was targeting core or casual players, but everyone loves zombies. 
and being able to mess around with them in so many ways. I thought people in Japan and abroad would all like the game. However, RE4, a game without zombies, was released the year before. Was Dead Rising trying to dethrone the RE franchise? I think that makes Dead Rising one of the classics. Also, I think anything with zombies needs a sense of humor. A zombie outbreak is a disaster. But I think you need to laugh too. If there are laughs, you can have some tears as well. Resident Evil, on the other hand, is cooler. The main characters are very cool. Kawano's continued passion for the game was evident from his intensity. Shinji Mikami made the Resident Evil game, so of course they have a sense of humor. Giant dolls appear and walk around. But I think we really filled Dead Rising with a ton of ridiculous stuff. If you're looking for a clear answer to that question, in the context of this program, I think it's fair to say that Dead Rising is the classic zombie game. A lot of people played the game when it first came out, but it wasn't the easiest to play. Now that it's been made a little more accessible, I'm excited for those who didn't play or couldn't finish to have another chance. Each of the directors had different experiences, but we'd like to salute both for their innovative contributions. And finally, we managed to draw out an intriguing bit of information from director Nakanishi. We'll let him have the final comment. We're making a new Resident Evil. It was really difficult to figure out what to do after 7. But I found it. And to be honest, it feels substantial. I can't share any details just yet, but I hope you're excited for the day I can.